Welcome back to the channel everyone. Doing some framing this week so we're going to need a whole bunch of wood. These are two by threes that I had to go to Home Depot to get because no one else carried them apparently. And using as my uh, Uncle David would say the world's most expensive framing saw. A miter saw. But anyway, I digress. So we're going to be framing out the whole thing this week. Uh, from the bathroom all the way to the bedroom wall, uh, bedroom picture wall. Um, we'll get to the rafters next week, but for this week we're just focusing on the walls. So I would set, on all these walls, I would set what I called the baseboard or the toe board that I would then build a wall and then set on top of. It just made it a little bit easier. And plus, I'm going to be putting in flooring and some insulation under the flooring. So I need the extra one and a half inch. Anybody that knows anything about the dimensional lumber knows you're a half inch short. So a two by four is not actually two inches by four inches or anything like that. It's actually a half inch shorter all the way around one and a half by three and a half. So I'm using two by threes. So this would be one and a half by two and a half. But anyway got the one wall framed up that was actually a big deal such a big deal that i didn't get footage of it smart right oh well things you learn as you go along it's nice and green here in uh, oklahoma this time of year which means it's also pretty humid by the way um i'll be doing a video on this makita nailer coming up really like it fairly lightweight for what it does didn't have any real problems out of it but uh, stay tuned, and I'll be posting a video on uh, what I really think of that whole thing. Pretty inexpensive, too. Bought on Amazon. But anyway, here just setting some boards, setting up the wall. It makes it a whole lot lighter to put in that toe board as well into the container. And then I just move this kind of rickety structure into place, get it all lined up, and nail it in. Um, I should probably do a little more backstory on who I am and what I am and where I ended up. I see, I've done a ton of research. By research, I mean watching a bunch of videos on YouTube and some other channels about people who've converted shipping containers. And the one thing that I keep seeing, especially on the channels you've probably heard of and have millions of views or at least thousands of views, hundreds of thousands, is they might, they seem a little fake to me. And what I mean by that is a lot of the videos you see the framing and they're adding in, but the main part of the framing is already there. So I suspect that there's some shenanigans going on. I don't know. Um, I have a little bit of background in building and construction. And by a little bit, I mean about a year's worth of professional. Uh, I've got uncle and a cousin that do it full time. So if I need help, I can call. Uh, grandpa has since passed on who did it full time so I mean it's kind of in the family but uh, I don't have a whole lot of money I don't have a whole lot of resources I have a whole bunch of tools um, I'm not backed by any bigger outfit or anything this is all me um, prior to this I was selling cars I sold cars got into car management things like that but was tired of it even though I made good money it's a good living just got tired of that very unfulfilling so I decided to quit that and start this whole thing and so here I am nailing boards together framing out a kitchen and living room wall of a high cube 20 foot shipping container hoping that I can do something with it and make some money off of it so this all kind of is a bigger picture for me I don't need to film this and talk and do all of those things and post it all on YouTube and kind of put myself out there but it feels like in this country at this time if maybe it can inspire one other person to do the same thing or at least take that leap like I am taking here maybe it'll do some good in the world but uh, anyway back to the framing here I'm just getting everything kind of lined up, kind of roughly lined up and put to the ground. Not a whole lot of nails in it, so if I need to move it, I can pop it out and move it fairly easily. But this is framing around the freedom door opening. And this is the header for those freedom doors. Again, 
if you watch the last video when I talked about cutting it out and putting in the uh, metal frames, everything was cut too big. So this is just, again, rough framing around those openings. And once I get the doors and everything, I'll be able to come in and put the final framing around it and then set the doors, set those freedom doors and that opening and set the windows. But until I get those from Home Depot and Lowe's, uh, which hopefully will be this week, first week of June, um, first full week of June, I can't really do much. Um, more cutting, cutting, cutting. Did pretty good with a saw. Uh, obviously, it was filmed over a few days because the shirts keep changing. Uh, some have more to the shirts, some not. But, you know, sun's out, gun's out, right? Uh, repping the Avenged Sevenfold shirt there. Supposed to be putting out a new album. But anyhow, putting up the divider wall. So this is going to separate the bathroom, which is that far part, far wall, from the main part of the rest of the tiny home here, the container house. Um, I went back and forth on how big to make the bathroom. We're going to end up going with a five-foot deep, five-foot uh, bathroom all the way around instead of trying to just shoehorn some 36 inch shower stall in there and all that just oh well we'll lose some on the other end but i think it'll be worth it in the end uh it's one of the big trade-offs obviously of doing a cont container is uh you're building within a structure so it can only be so big obviously if you want it bigger than that you have to buy another container and now your whole budget basically is shot it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and that kind of brings me back to the topic of some of the other channels that I s I've seen of where they're doing these big grandiose things with multiple containers and which come out kind of cool, but you end up, it seems like you're going to be sinking around a hundred thousand dollars into a tiny home, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you were buying a whole bunch of land and then building container homes and came out to a hundred thousand dollars or so that would make a, some sense to me. But a $50,000 solar array doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you're trying to do min minimalistic living or scaling down or things like that. Because the solar panels are not going to last forever and they take constant maintenance. Is that a, is that a more cost effective and earth friendly thing than just normal electric? It doesn't seem like it to me. And maybe, I don't know, put something in the comments. If I'm wrong, let me know I'm wrong. If I'm missing something, let me know what I'm missing. But it doesn't seem to be uh, cost effective. It seems to be more of a, maybe a virtue signal or something like that. But there again, if you're going to do the minimalistic lifestyle, isn't the idea to do it as minimal as possible as well as cost minimizing? You know, if you want, one of the benefits of doing a tiny home is you can do this smaller space with a lot nicer materials on the inside and kind of spoil yourself. If you don't need a whole lot of living space, you can have kind of the finer things in life when it comes to building these homes, which is very attractive to me and a whole lot of other people, I think. Um, you know, it seems like one of the things we're going to do is a vacation rental with this. And if it pans out, maybe we do more. And I think that's one of the things that people like when they travel and want to stay in one of these vacation homes is that they get a nicer place than just the Motel 6 or, or whatever. You know, the cost might be about the same, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but you get a much nicer space. And... It's not like you're going to live there for the rest of your life, so you get this kind of smaller space. But uh, anyway, here I am putting in this bedroom wall. It came out really good, and this is everything when it's done. I got all of just the normal framing in, all the walls done. There's some blocking that still needs to be done, and I'll do that in another video. But shot this with my phone. I think it came out pretty good. Not bad for an amateur. Got some of the rafters in there, but again, that's another video. But everything's in. Everything's solid. Um, I used some of those uh, Simpson straps at the top and went into the overall structure, tube structure. You can see it up there of the shipping container. And that really solidified the walls top to bottom and really pulled everything together. The thing is going to be overbuilt. 
as far as uh, rattles and squeaks and, you know, things like that and the walls moving and hell it better be because I got to move this thing about five miles on a truck bed. So it needs to be pretty sturdy, but just some shots of, uh, I got pretty good with the tape measure and able to line up some of my stuff there and I was pretty proud of it. So I had to take a video of it and you got to see it. And there's the freedom door opening. Again, it's been cut wide, so it doesn't really matter. And that's not exactly, th there's going to be another header under that that supports the whole structure. So I had a little bit of spray foam in there between the frame and the uh, structure itself as well. Um, came out pretty good. And this is me putting the sheeting on the bedroom wall. This is the outside sheeting. Doing all this pretty much 100% by myself, so you get pretty creative of uh, throwing stuff up there. And it's hard to see, but I actually put in some temporary screws just to hold it up. Did it on the bottom, of course, didn't get video of that. Again, trying to think too much. Sometimes you just forget to hit the video button, but it feels good to do this stuff by yourself with your own thoughts and, you know, you think about a whole lot of different things while you're doing this, one of which is don't drop anything, don't hurt your back, but uh, you know, it feels good to go from having a desk job, kind of an office job where I sat behind a computer all day long, to actually using my hands again, getting dirty, getting splinters, you know, lifting heavy things, having to think a couple of steps ahead, move this, move that, don't move this, don't move that, you screwed this up, Hey, that came out great. Some of those things, you know, and you kind of come up with the easy way to do things like this. Just put it up there, put in some temporaries, trace it out with a pencil, go back and cut it instead of trying to measure out exactly from left to right. And then put your tape down and make sure your, your lines are straight and chalk a line or all this. Nah. Then get the saw. Try not to cut your fingers off, obviously, but uh, use a circular saw, chalk the line, run it down, and she's cut. Then throw it up into place. Should have knocked more of the sawdust off before I did that. Got a nice face full. Get your board cut, put it up, tack it in, make sure everything lines up good. Again, this is framing, so no one will ever see this, but you still want it to be kind of nice. You know, and that's the other part. If you pay someone to do it, how's it come out? You'd have to be standing over their shoulders seeing exactly what they're doing. They do it a lot quicker, but I don't know if they would do it any better. But thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If I sound like an idiot, if I sound grandiose, if I sound like a fool, go ahead and put it in the comments. Like it, dislike it. I don't care. Just give me some feedback if you guys are watching. But check us out on Instagram, Oki Homies, Rumble. You guys can read, hopefully. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>